Hello, how are you guys all doing? I hope you're doing well. All right, we're gonna go back to where we looked at the Boy and Force last time on this brick and this plastic box. So we're gonna continue with that. I don't have the aquarium and everything with me, but I want you to remember, and if you need to go back and rewatch that first video on Boy and Force, please do so. But we wanna take a look at why did this brick not float of course, but did float when we placed it in the bucket. So I explained that to you in words last time. Now we want to put some numbers to it so we can actually build some things and do some more calculations with that. So before we begin today's class, let's begin in prayer. We'll go ahead with a Hail Mary again in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. All right, so let's review again that. What I want to draw a little bit different of a picture for you is to get you that visual of what the buoyant force is again. So remember that the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. All right? So the weight of the fluid displaced. So if I could have in my aquarium, if it was completely filled all the way to the very top, right? So imagine a container that has a fluid in it and it is completely filled all the way to the top. Of course, if you take something and you submerge it in there, if you take it and I want to submerge and I start placing something in there, that might have a shape like this. The amount of fluid that's going to get pushed out of there, if I had some kind of container that that fluid could go into, it would displace an equal amount over here, right? So that fluid that would flow out into here, the same volume would be the same. If I were to take this volume and I weigh it, that's what the buoyant force is equal to. So if I take this amount of fluid and I put it on a scale and I weigh it, then my buoyant force that is on this is equal to the volume of the weight of the volume of water displaced or whatever fluid you have here. So if I only submerge half of this in, it's only going to submerge or displace half of that fluid. So it's the weight of that fluid that gets displaced that determines our buoyant force, right? So sometimes you don't have the whole thing submerged, which is what we saw with the plastic bucket. The whole thing did not need to be submerged. So let's look at, <clears throat> go a little bit backwards and let's go back to this brick, all right? So if I go back to this brick, obviously, nice rectangular shape, take a look at that. So we have this nice brick, right? And I can easily measure the dimensions of this brick, which I did. So its length was 23 centimeters. The width, going back, was 7.5 centimeters, and it had a height to it of 1 centimeter. So those are the dimensions of our brick. So the volume of this brick is equal to the length times the width times the height, right? So the volume of any rectangular shape. So changing that to meters, we can say that's 0.23 meters times 0 0.075 meters times 0.01 meters to give us the volume of the brick to be, to calculating that I get 1.73 times 10 to the minus 4 meters cubed. All right? So keep that in mind. That's the volume of our brick. So if I completely submerge this brick into the water, the most water it can displace is going to be this volume. Okay? The mass of this brick was measured on a scale, and I got that mass to be 337 grams, which is 0.337 kilograms. So the weight of this brick would be its mass times acceleration due to gravity, right? So the weight of the brick would be 0.337 kilograms times 9.8 per second squared, okay? So the weight of our brick is equal to 3.3 newtons, okay? The volume of the brick is 1.73 times 7 to the minus fourth meters cubed. 
for this brick to float, right, if I were to put it into anything, for it to just sit on the table, the forces that would be on the brick would, you need weight, and then you would need an upward force of some kind so that the two are equal to each other, right? So if you want this to be balanced. If we're using water, that force is coming from the result of a buoyant force, right? But obviously, it didn't float, which meant that that buoyant force was much less than what the weight was. So that buoyant force being much smaller, the brick falls down, the net force is downward, and it's going to go down. And no matter how much, once it's submerged, it can't ever have any bigger of a buoyant force because it can't displace any more fluid. So what exactly would that buoyant force be? How much buoyant force was acting on the brick when it was placed in the water? So we would go back and say, well, when I take this brick and I place it in the water, this is the volume of water that will be displaced. I'm going to write that volume up here, 1.73 times 10 to the minus 4 meters cubed. So if I take that brick and I submerge it into the water, the most water it can displace is this. So we would say the buoyant force is equal to the density of water times the volume of water displaced And that represents the mass of water displaced times g. That gives us the weight of water displaced, which would be equivalent to this buoyant force. So you can look up online easily. The density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. We're going to use the kilograms and the meters cubed to keep g at 9.8 meters per second squared. So the density of water, 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. The volume displaced would be all of the shape of the brick, 1.73 times 10 to the minus 4 meters cubed times 9.8 meters per second squared. So all of those multiplied together gives us our maximum buoyant force to be, I get 1.69. So if the weight of my brick is 3.3, obviously this buoyant force of 1.69 is not enough to keep that afloat. So what do we need to do? How do we make the buoyant force more so that this matches the weight? We put it into something that allows it to displace enough water, right? So we're going to submerge it into there, and it's going to displace now even more water. So. I measured that, so you can go back to the video and take a look at that. So if we were to redraw the picture now, our brick hasn't changed, right? So the brick did not change its weight. We simply took a bucket, right, with a little bit more dimensions, and we took that brick, if I draw that there, right? So here's our bucket, and we took our brick, and we placed that inside here. Inside our bucket, right? And it's sitting inside the bucket, and then we submerged it into the water. And what we noticed was, the bucket now allowed us to displace even more water. So if we were to go in and we would take these measurements of where was the water around our bucket, we could measure the volume of water displaced by the bucket, which I did. So if we take a look at our bucket, let's see. We had 19 centimeters this way. In the back, the width of it, I get 14.5 centimeters, and the height of the fluid that was displaced, where it was, so I don't need the whole height of the bucket, right? So we're not going to use this entire thing, only the volume of water that was displaced. So we're only going to measure the height of this bucket right here. So that height, I'm getting to be 1.7 centimeters, which is what I measured on the bucket when it was inside the aquarium. So that gives us a volume of water displaced <coughs> excuse me 
excuse me. Again, length times width times our height. So that length is going to be 0.19. Change that to meters. 0.145 meters and 0.017 meters. Okay. So plugging that in, we get a total volume of 4.59 times 10 to the minus third meters cubed. So that is the volume of water that was displaced when we put it in there. So I'm going to pause and you calculate what's the buoyant force on here as a result of being placed in there. So before I do it, you see if you can figure out that buoyant force. So to get that buoyant force, it would again would be the density of water times the volume of water displaced times G. So 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. The volume displaced is 4. Point, what was that? 59 times 10 to the minus 4 meters cubed times 9.8 meters per second squared. What you get there is a buoyant force equal to Why would that buoyant force have to be a little bit more? Well, we didn't account for the mass of the bucket. So we need the mass of the bucket added into that. And if you'd add that in, the mass of the bucket actually was 200 or 122 grams. So our total mass of the total mass being floated was not 337, but if we'd add the mass of the bucket, okay. Floating was a mass of the bucket plus mass of the brick. Which would be equal to 337 grams plus 122 grams for a total of, let's see, 459 grams. So your weight total would have been 0.459 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. So the total weight of the whole system, right? If we plug that in there, I think I get 459, 4.5 is the weight total, which means this has to come down, right? And the fact that it flowed with our buoyant force, right? those two are now equal to one another. So the buoyant force that acts on an object is equal to the weight of the water displaced, how much water gets displaced. All right, so this is chapter 13. In